Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to perform quantile regression in R. If you are not familiar with the theory of quantile regression, you can watch my video on uh, theory of quantile regression. I'm going to provide that in the description. You can watch that, but I'll briefly talk about what is quantile regression and how is it different from a, a normal uh, linear regression. Well, uh, as the name suggests, quantile regression is regression for the quantile, the different quantiles of the given data. In uh, a linear regression, we always try to predict the mean of the dependent variable, right? If Y is the dependent variable, we like to uh, predict the mean of Y given the X variables or the independent variables. Uh, while in quantile regression, we are more interested in the median or different quantiles. So given the X variables, can we predict the different quantiles of uh, the dependent variable? And why is that important? Well, sometimes we like to know how, uh, you know, it, the predictions actually differ with respect to quantiles. So we may want to have different regression lines for different quantiles. Sometimes it's important for researcher, but there are also other reasons why we uh, use quantile regressions. Oftentimes we encounter what is known as the problem of uh, heteroscedasticity or not having uh, uniform variance uh, for the error terms. And that's also when, you know, quantile regression uh, helps. So while we're going through the, uh, yeah, going through how we can, we can sort of do it, I'll also, yeah, explain a bit about the theoretical uh, aspect of it, but for more details, you can watch a very detailed video I have on quantile regression. You can, you know, if you actually do a Google search also on uh, on YouTube, uh, you can also find uh, that my video, but I will give the link. Anyway, so uh, first uh, we'll see actually what the data will use. Well, the data that we will use are just two values, y, uh, variables, y and x like to predict y given uh, x. Okay, so x is the independent variable, y is the dependent variable. Uh, it's a very simple problem where we like to predict y given x. Now, let's uh, first uh, plot the data. Okay, I've already plotted it. Uh, we use ggplot, so first uh, please install if it is not there in your session. So please install and <clears throat> call it through library function. And then, uh, yeah, I'm uh, plotting it and I've already plotted it. So this is how it looks like, right? So can you uh, guess actually whether this is a proper data for linear regression? Well, if you're familiar with linear regression, I'm sure you already have some sort of uh, question mark whether we can actually fit a linear regression line to this data. Why? Because initially, like for the smaller value of X, you will see that the variance is less. Whereas when the X values, uh, X takes bigger values, then the variance is much higher. Now this is a classic problem of uh, not having uh, uniform variance of the error terms. And it violates one of the assumption of linear regression and hence we cannot properly actually do a uh, linear regression with uh, such a data. Now, what's the solution? What's the way out then? Well, the, the, the way we can handle this is actually using a weighted linear regression. So weighted linear regression can also uh, handle this particular problems. Okay. Uh, the, the other option could be that we remove the outliers. We consider like the top observations. You can see my cursor, right? These observations as outliers or the bottom observations are outliers and we simply remove them and then we perform a linear regression. But that will be loss of information. When you remove uh, some of the observation from your data set, that is loss of information. And uh, in problems where you, know, you do not have too many data points, you cannot afford to lose uh, data, data points. So that's uh, going to adversely affect your results. So in that case, we either use weighted least square regression, but we can also use quantile regression. Uh, but quantile regressions has also many other benefits. Uh, for example, you can uh, you can have multiple regression lines for different quantiles, and we'll see how we can have. One thing you do note here is that 
You can also use quantile regression when you have outliers because quantile regression is not uh, very sensitive to outliers. So if you have outliers and you don't want to remove them for a lot of other reasons, you can use quantile regression. All right. So now this is uh, the data set. As I said, the variance is quite high towards the right side of the x-axis when the x takes bigger values i y varies a lot and that's a uh, problem in the regression we like to fit a linear regression line and see actually how the problem is actually quite evident okay so what i'm doing here is that i'm just trying to fit a smooth line uh, and method is lm it's basically linear regression and you also have the confidence bound around it okay so this is a linear regression line i fit uh, with the confidence bound you see the shaded area is the confidence bound now what you see is that for the initial part of x up until when x takes a value of 50 we're still okay you know the model performs fine uh, you know it fits the data points pretty well but after 50 after x takes a value of 50 it becomes a problem for example if x takes a value of 80 you see the y takes a value you know if you, from this regression line you can predict y taking a value of 14 and the confidence bound is between 13 to 15 but that's not the case in the actual data the confidence uh, the lower value can be as low as 9 the upper value can be as high as 22 that means the predictions are not at all in line with what the data actually says hence we simply cannot rely on such a model uh, but how do we then solve it? Well, we'll solve it using uh, a linear, uh, sorry, a quantile regression. Okay. So what we'll try to do here is that, in, because as you know, in linear regression, we try to predict the mean, right? Mean of the dependent variable. But is it okay if we predict something different than mean, right? Mean. The problem with mean is that it uh it is uh like it, it has to pass through the middle of the data point and it doesn't talk about the uh the extremes right if the, the variation is uniform or not that much then it's still fine but if it is uh different across data points then we have a problem and here's a classic issue can we predict only the 90th percentile or 75th percentile of the uh, data point right instead of just mean right and you can have multiple such regression line and you know it helps actually to predict okay for the for the 90th percentile use regression line one for 75th percentile use the regression line two and so on and so forth so instead of just one regression you have multiple uh, such regression lines okay so this is for the 90th percentile line we will use more of a quantile regression which is will predict the 90th percentile or you know actually in syntax it's quantile basically you know quantiles and percentiles are similar terms 20 i mean 25th percentile uh, quant uh, yeah so quantile and sim uh, percentile are similar terms so you can actually uh, do a bit of a google search just to understand the you know very small difference that you probably fine but it's, it's just about how you use it okay so uh, 90th percentile is basically the 90th quantile um, that's how you see in the uh, syntax okay uh, using ggplot also we can predict something like that but we will use more of a dedicated uh, function for quantile regression but here you see instead of predicting the mean you see the you, you now we predict uh, the 90th quantile. Now the good thing with that is that now when x takes a value of 80, y takes a value of something like 19 or 20, right? So it is somewhat, so now the regression line is doing good, especially for the uh, top uh, observations, right? It does bad actually for the lower ones, but we can have another regression line for that. So that's when it is actually very useful, right? So it is somewhat better. It's definitely not the best line. Still there are issues, still there are outliers which the line cannot predict. But 
it is better than definitely better than the linear regression line which was simply underestimating the uh, y value uh, for x values greater than uh, 50 right for higher x values now you can change that quantile right it's need not be just uh, 0.9 for example i like to have something for the lower one so let me take something like 0 0.3 so now this particular line is yeah again is doing justice to the the data points um, which were somewhat lower to the distribution right and you can you can see that here also right for the lower observations it is doing uh, better in terms of predicting it um, but we can't have something like this syntax so there is a dedicated package for this and it's contract so we just in, yeah, and just call this library uh, quantric and we have RQ is the function here. Syntax for quant uh, quantile regression is very similar to linear regression, provide the dependent variable and then uh, the list of independent variable. Here we have just one independent variable. You can have more than uh, one independent variable also. And uh, provide the data set, name, name of the data set. And then you can give something like, okay, so for what quantile you want to predict. So here we have 90, you can change it to 75, 80, 50. Uh, the default is median uh, because quantile regression was initially, uh, initially, uh, you know, it was developed to predict the median instead of mean. But that median can change actually, as in it, it, median is basically the middle quantile, right? It can, the quantile can change, uh, could be 25, 75, something like that. Okay, so let us uh, run this script. All right, so now it is run. Um, summarize the results. Here you see this is the intercept. This is the x value. Uh, and this is only applicable. This regression line is only applicable for the 90th percentile of the data, not for the other part of the data. So if you want to predict the 90th percentile of a given dependent variable, uh, you can use this regression line. So while you are going to write uh, the predictions, you have to specify that this regression equation can only be used to predict the 90th percentile of the dependent variable. Right? That is very, very important. <clears throat> okay. Now, the thing is, uh, we will not be happy just by having 90th percentile right because when you are doing a research you are not just interested in just uh, particular percentile uh, we are also interested in all section of the data if the data is well distributed then we simply need one regression that that generalizes right the pattern in the data but if it is something of this kind then we need multiple quantile regression line in order to explain or sort of predict the values of uh, dependent variable for uh, yeah so you could maybe you could do 25th so 50th and then 75 right then you will have three lines uh, and you know that will be better compared to let's say just a linear regression line okay so here we want to do for each 10th quantile Okay, it's just an example. Well, it may not be like you cannot have 10 regression lines. You could have three or four depending on the research question. You know, it all depends on the, uh, the quest, the research question, the research problem uh, as to how many you want. It also depends on the uh, how, like how previous researchers have uh, done it, right? You can also review a bit of literature on that in order to come up with the number of regression lines you will, you will want to have. But for the sake of example, I'm trying to have uh, 10 such lines for each of the 10th quantiles. okay? So syntax is like, okay, you basically sign uh, in a vector, you just have values from like, yeah, basically uh, one to, sorry, 0.1 to 0.9, that means for every 10th percentile, there will be a regression line, right? It's as simple as that, basically. You know, if I actually run this particular script, I can show you here. 
what uh, you have in QS. So you basically have 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, that means 10th percentile, 20th, 30th, 40th, up till 19th, right? And then instead of hard coding a value here, like we did last time, 90%, here we have this vector which takes value from 0 0.1 to 0 0.9 and the the syntax remains same like we, how we use last time around so we have dependent variable independent variable is x and only change here is that instead of this one hard coded value for percentile we have now 10 such values so we'll now get 10 regression lines okay and we'll see so here we go and Okay, how about just seeing the values, right? The estimates and all. Um, let me run this. All right, so see here. Just where is the okay, so it's saying solution may be non unique. Okay, let's plot it, I think it's better. Sort of, uh, yeah, so we'll use again the plot to plot these lines. It's better to understand. Uh, and here in the quantiles, instead of just specifying, like we did last time, specifying a hard-coded value, here we give this vector. Okay, and syntax otherwise remains the same. All right, here you see trend regression, quantile regression line fitting the different section of the data, but 10 could be too many, right? For a given research problem. As I said, you know, it, it's somewhat um, uh, subjective as to how many you would like to have. It can be uh, somewhat trial and error and see actually how many actually uh, uh, are the, well, what's the optimal number of uh, regression lines that you like to have. Too many obviously is bad. This one line is also bad. So it has to be something like four or five, something like that. But again, it depends on the research problem. Uh, as I said, the good thing with this is, is that there's no one size fit rule, as in there's no one line that fits all the observations. You can have separate, uh, separate way of dealing the separate quantiles of the observation, specifically when the distribution of the data is, um, yeah, especially in cases where the distribution of the data is uh, so, you know, uh, so, you know, variance wise, it is not that uniform. Okay. Hence, uh, quantile integration in those cases uh, is very useful. And also, when you have outliers, uh, this is quite useful, actually. But uh, you can also try it, uh, wet regression, especially when you have outliers which also deals with uh, not less quite well. But this is one handy technique, especially uh, the research question, um, the research question demands that, you know, you're particular about uh, the predictions, but differently for different quantiles. And in the theory video that I have created, right, and, and you can find the link to the list in the description, there you will find a very good example from the development economics where I've taken and uh, why quantile regression is more suitable in, for that problem uh, than a simple linear regression.